Okay, so it is race week. We are here in Southern Utah for the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in St. George. I think the main thing from the outside, it pretty much maybe always looks like an athlete has a very smooth journey to a start line unless they actually document things that have gone wrong. And I would definitely say it's been a bit of a rocky road to get into this point. Um, obviously, we had the Collins Cup, which will have been three weeks before this race. I picked up a stomach bug in that race, which did halt me for at least a week and a half. So when I got here, I was still really struggling with that issue. And I think the main thing I need to learn as an athlete is although my body can recover so quickly from training, it maybe can't recover as quickly as that when I have an illness or something like that. So getting over the stomach bug was a bit of a frustration, but we, we got through that. I feel like I need to pull up my list of things that went wrong because it's been quite a lot. <laughs> My power meter broke in Slovakia, I think it broke through travel, so that was quite annoying in the race, but I just thought it was like a pairing issue. Unfortunately, it broke entirely, so a new one has been shipped here, I now have a new power meter, so tick, that's fixed. I managed to bruise my knee, I don't know if I did that in travel, um, but definitely on my first few sessions here, I was like, mm, my knee feels a bit painful. Luckily, we decided to bring my physio, Michael, here, and he's just worked his magic. That has gone, it has not returned so that's a big relief that that's over with. My bike also had some other issues which we think were from traveling and just felt really strange riding it. I actually wanted to do a recce ride of the course the first week we were here but again it's been fixed the local mechanic sorted it. it wasn't actually a big deal I think it had just got slightly damaged in travel but it is now fine. Then Reese got a cold which although he literally didn't even sleep in my room as soon as he thought he was ill. I managed to get the cold. Definitely wasn't COVID, so that was a big plus. Again, I think that shifted now. I feel so much better, so that's great. Um, the kind of final part of the cold, I think, was that I got my first ever migraine. I've never experienced one before. So now people who get those, I really do feel for you because it was horrendous. And having it at 2,600 meters of altitude, I think just emphasized how bad it was, but we got over it. I haven't had a cold in 18 months, which is probably because everyone's been locked away and everyone's been hyper vigilant with their hygiene. I got a cold, so. The first few days of altitude were interesting, having a head cold, and then it went to my chest. Had a little bit of a, a rough ride at the beginning, but actually got over it quite quickly. Had like three days of feeling rough and then bounced back. I was using the Whoop to track my symptoms almost. Uh, my HRV dropped loads, my respiratory rate went up, my resting heart rate went up, which I thought was just a response to altitude. And then the final straw was that I wanted to open water swim yesterday and for some reason the lake was just full of dead fish. The local informed me that basically they put a certain amount of new fish into the lake and then a certain amount don't survive. So it wasn't that the water itself was toxic or anything, it was just unfortunately those fish didn't survive. But here we are, we're on race week. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm injury free, I'm feeling strong. I feel like the altitude is having a positive benefit on me. And now really I just feel like there's nothing to lose. I mean, what more can go wrong? I mean, I don't actually want to risk saying that. And I'm just looking forward to going out there and actually doing probably the easier part of my job, which is just going and smashing it and working hard in a race. Um, that's what we're all athletes, that's what we all love doing. So yeah, can't wait for race day now.
in the second week at altitude, I was definitely able to tolerate a lot more quality in my sessions, even at high altitude. Um, so I did a couple of track based sessions which we were going to do on the track but you were limited on time that you could actually use the track so we decided to use the it's nearly a kilometre loop around the lake um, down in Cedar City so track session has moved from the track to our favourite little loop around the little local lake we're going to be doing 16500 today at a bit faster than race pace so quite a short and intense high quality session in the heat getting ready for St George where the run is going to be pretty hot. Here he is. Ready. week on week I've been able to do a little bit more intensity so the first time we were down there my session involved 12 200s within a longer run and um, then the next week it was 16 500s uh, within a longer based run and then actually today I was able to do four times 1500 meters so each week the kind of intensity has gone up on that session and I've basically been able to run the same pace each session so the 200 to the 500 to the 1500 I've held the same pace that I was holding on the 200 on the 1500 this week so I've definitely adapted to being able to do really hard sessions at altitude that was hot I actually felt good so which is good just over 19k feeling good in the heat 1900 meters of altitude, still feel good. Yeah, happy with that. Some other key workouts on the bike. Um, I actually was able to go and ride Snow Canyon and try out the climb, which is gonna be in the race. So today we are gonna be doing the 70.3 World Championship route. We're gonna be taking in the main climb. It's a three hour ride and Lucy's got three times 20 minute efforts in there. So we're basically just gonna go up and down the hill three times. Um, and then take on a little bit more of the route, finish off in the town probably. The first one was just a medium effort, the second one was a harder effort and then the third one was another medium effort. I felt really good on these, it was getting near to 40 degree heat when we did that session. On the second effort, without even really trying, I was actually able to get one of the fastest times on that segment on Strava. I think it was like the second best time. I think it's now like the third best time because Paula Finley went and absolutely destroyed it the other day. But yeah, that was just a great confidence boost to actually go and ride the climb in the heat it's absolutely stunning like the scenery around it i'm sure we won't take in a lot of that on race day but really enjoyed that why have you brought ducks and mouses to you time not me <laughs> lost it <laughs> no canyon time free lost it so the difference between pace from up here and down at sea level so we're at 2400 meters which is about just over 9500 feet i'm about 15 seconds per kilometer slower up here for the same heart rate. I'm probably the same pace in the pool, which really surprised me. I thought I'd be particularly slower in the swimming pool because it's quite hypoxic anyway, but you can definitely notice you're short of breath. I'm not entirely sure what that means. It, it might just mean that because I've got a background in swimming, I can push harder to achieve the same pace. I'm not tracking my heart rate when I'm swimming, so my heart rate is probably higher for that pace. We're working in yards as well, using a transformation to meters, but I'm roughly the same pace as I would be back at sea level for roughly the same perceived level of effort. I just feel like I'm a little bit like coming off the walls, doing tumble turns. I normally would do two fly kicks 
and I kind of feel like I need to get up for air, especially going from Lanzarote, which is a 50 metre pool, down to short course yards. In a 50 metre pool, you, you have a long time between tumble turns, it's a little less hypoxic and you can get into your stroke a little bit more, whereas yards you can't, and then amplified that with being at altitude. And on the bike, I mean, I'm on a cross bike, so I can't really say I'm using a different power meter than I normally would, and I'm just using heart rate as a guide, so not really too sure about power on the bike. Um, I've had the Wahoo kicker up here, and I've done a couple of rides since feeling better. Again, it's a different power meter to back home, but I'd say I'm probably around 30 to 40 watts less up here than I would be down at sea level for the same heart rate. You know, you'd have to take everything with a pinch of salt because it's different power meters, uh, different bikes, different setups. It's also very hot up here as well. We were planning for it to be quite cold and it's been high 20s most days, even at this altitude. My time on the time trial was 27 minutes, which is actually really poor. That was the morning just before I started to get symptoms of feeling ill. All the way leading into that, my heart rate had been really high because we'd been at altitude, but during that race, like I, my heart rate didn't really go above 140, partly because I had a really small chain ring on. So I was spinning like, I don't know, 110 cadence, not going very fast at all. And I was on a cross bike, so yeah, had big fat tires on, making all the excuses. But basically after that, I kind of thought, well, maybe something's not right there, because normally I can get my heart rate really high on something like that. And then, yeah, straight afterwards, I started to get the sore throat and everything. But yeah, 27 minutes, and Lucy was 22 minutes, so she caught me and left me for dead. There's nothing I can do. Once she went past me, I was out of gears. I couldn't have hung on anyway. She was absolutely solid on that. Be free. I did a really hard VO2 bike session on the trainer. It was nearly three hours with lots of hard intervals in there and tolerated the altitude really, really well. Off the back of that hard session, I actually did a run up here at altitude um, where I incorporated 540 metres of elevation, which was downhill and uphill running, to try and mimic the race course in St George on Saturday, which has about 400 metres of elevation in 21 kilometres whereas I was able to do 540 metres in a 12 kilometre run. So I'm feeling really confident about the run now. In terms of swimming, pretty much every session I do for swimming involves some quality, but I've definitely been able to hit faster and faster pace the longer we've been here. So I'm definitely, again, able to tolerate that altitude better, but the swim was always the one where I was able to tolerate it the best. The reason why we decided to come up to altitude before leading into the 70.3 worlds was actually because we was going to be doing an altitude training camp in Spain in a place called Sierra Nevada. But the Spanish Paralympic team decided to create a COVID bubble at the venue, which meant that we was no longer able to train there. So an altitude camp was always on the agenda. I was looking at some cool places to do some training around St. George, and I noticed the mountain region to the north. Uh, and it just got me thinking, actually, we could probably achieve the altitude training camp in Utah rather than going from Spain over to the 70.3 Worlds. And at the time of planning this training camp, the Ironman World Championships was still on and we decided that an altitude training camp would be of benefit for the Ironman World Championship. But then everything changed. Um, by the time we booked our accommodation, Kona had been cancelled. It's an altitude training camp leading into 70.3 Worlds. 
give it a go. It's our first altitude camp, so the plan was to have a month, but given the time frame between Collins Cup and now, it only allowed for that sort of just over two, two and a half week window before going down into St George. Uh, speaking to other people who have done it, so like Joe Skipper, for example, sometimes he finds he's a little bit flat afterwards and then comes good four weeks later. Uh, speaking to Dan Larang, he sort of gave us uh, guidance as to which altitude we should try and aim for. He's obviously been guiding us through which training sessions to do and things to look out for, which supplements to take when you're up at altitude. So we've had a lot of good guidance. We'll have to see how it plans out on race day, but I personally feel like I've got a lot from it as well. So it's only been just over two weeks at altitude, but it's enough to start seeing some benefits. Yeah, so I've actually managed to do a really solid strength and conditioning program since being here in Cedar City. We didn't want to take the risk to go to too many public places um, just because of COVID, cold and flu, leading into a race, sickness, etc. So I decided it would be best to kind of make my own gym programme on the balcony here. And I've pretty much been able to cover almost everything that I would do in my normal gym programme just using dumbbells, ankle weights and elastic bands. So I feel like I've covered everything. I feel really strong actually, so I feel like that's worked. And actually after the first session, um, on the first week we were here, I had quite bad doms. So that's always a sign that the session has actually done something. So yeah, I've been really happy with that. And I think it definitely draws upon my old personal training background and my kind of creativeness to make exercises with minimal equipment or whatever you have available to you. So I'm glad that's kind of paid off a little bit more in my triathlon as well. What's that one called? <laughs> uh, the Jelly Wiggle. I think my nose got squished. I look like Squidward. Mm. Maybe <laughs> the next pop up will be Squidward on the screen. Squeen. <laughs> so, as always, um, I was looking at some adventurous things to do, and I'm in a new location, so I just decided to have a look at what events were going on. And it turns out Cedar City is the it's a festival city. There's always something happening. Um, and luck would coincide with us being here that there was a half marathon, but it was a massive downhill half marathon. It had 800 meters of descent. I've never done anything like that in my life. Uh, it was just basically a controlled free fall half marathon. I thought it would be really quick, but it was actually just an absolute quad burner. Started off at 2,600 metres, so the air was nice and thin up there, it was cold in the morning, and then you're descending down this amazing canyon. I was actually quicker the last half where it flattened out a little bit because I could get into my stride. I ended up coming second overall, I was really happy with that. I wasn't really aiming for you know, a win or anything, I was just aiming to, to do it for a bit of fun. It's now three days afterwards and I'm just about walking semi-normal again so definitely done some damage to my legs but hopefully once they heal they'll be adapted and stronger. <laughs> so obviously recovery is so important particularly when you're training at altitude and you're putting your body through a lot more stress so we made the decision to fly my physio Michael out here just to keep on top of any niggles or anything that might happen through doing different kinds of training to at home like normally my track sessions would be maybe on a softer surface whereas here I've been running on a concrete path so we wasn't sure kind of what effect that would have um, we've been using the cold lake here to kind of have like a nice bath simulation um, and then also just using things like the recovery boots generally just eating a healthy balanced diet trying to refuel as quickly as possible after sessions but nothing super out there obviously sleeping quite a lot as well um, but yeah nothing really that I wouldn't do at home as well. So a lot of people have been asking about the blood glucose monitor that I had on in our previous video. Um, it's actually a Super Sapiens blood glucose monitor and it had a like cover patch on it to kind of keep it secure while we exercised. Particularly when you're in the swimming pool, it can be a little bit loose. So yeah, I've been using the blood glucose monitor for, I don't know, about three, three months now on and off. 
uh, find it really interesting to monitor your blood glucose levels when you're working out and I was just particularly interested to see what effect the altitude would have. And what was really interesting though was actually when I was sick with the cold my blood glucose levels were really erratic, super high and then drop down low like almost off the chart low so I'm not entirely sure the reasons for that maybe someone in the comments could suggest why that might have been uh, but I certainly felt it when I was getting up off of the bed or getting up out of the sofa suddenly I'd get really lightheaded I don't know maybe my body was taking in all the glucose to try and boost up the immune system and fight off whatever I had but just an interesting observation definitely something worth looking at if you want to track your blood glucose levels throughout your training so there's definitely always pressure going into any race that I'm doing I, I'm always an athlete that wants to be at the front of the race I want to be winning the race it doesn't matter what it is it could be park run I want to win so there's always that pressure but I don't really feel more pressure because there's not Kona it's just another stepping stone it's another race every race is just another opportunity to show the training that you've been doing so I actually feel quite relaxed about this race I've proven this year that I can race pretty much across any distance so I don't feel like I kind of have that label on me now of Lucy's a specialist at this so it's not like I'm really expected to win or I don't really feel like I'm expected to win so it's definitely a nice place to go into a race um, and with Kona being moved to February it's allowed me to go more all in on this race because I know that I've got more time to recover but you kind of have no choice but to go all in for this because everyone who's here hasn't got Kona till February so in theory everyone should be going all in and being wanting to put down their best day and at the end of the day it's a world championships there's a world title on the line so it's definitely all to play for. So when you're this close to a race and it is race week, there is absolutely no point in trying to get any additional things out of session. So you can't gain any more fitness this close to a race, but you can definitely gain fatigue, injure yourself, or just basically put unnecessary stress on the body. So basically it is time to just chill out, get your sessions done, but don't try and get anything extra from them and try and freshen up get your mind in the game and get as ready as possible for race day. In terms of winding down my training leading into a race, um, so today we're at the beginning of race week and today was my last hard run session and tomorrow, uh, Tuesday of race week, will be my last hard bike session. I tend to keep the intensity going on the swim because obviously it's my background, I'm so used to doing it. It kind of just keeps that sharpness without really putting a massive toll um, and load through my body so we're pretty much there now there's not a lot left to do and like I said I can't gain any more fitness between now and then but I can definitely absolutely destroy my race by doing too much so actually kicking back relaxing is exactly what you should be doing on race week okay thanks for watching this has been a little lead in to race week i'm so excited to race i can't wait for all of you to see how i get on so make sure to follow along on race day and as always make sure to like and subscribe as we will be doing a post race roundup of how the race went without getting Oh, oh that is hot. Out.